crystal seek and the guide seek for design and evaluation for guide RNAs in CRISPR Cas9 genome editing systems. And so at first I want to say that we have as the, as a core we have um, developed a dozen by conduct packages. Um, ranging from you know annotation and quality of control, peak calling, machine learning, and motif analysis, proteomics, and genome editing. Uh, it's quite a variety. And today, um, I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about CRISPR seq and guide seq. These two packages about genome editing, and Jian Hong will take over in the, in the second half. Talk about the motif stack and DAG logo for motif analysis. So CRISPR-Cas9 system is uh, a recent development. Actually, recently it's already you know, the most recent. It's about uh, seven years now. And um, it's uh, um, for um, helping adapted for, adopted for genome editing. It has another um, different applications too. And it borrows a strategy from the way a bacteria fights uh, the uh, virus infection and the uh, as the virus first infect uh, the bacteria, part of its DNA sequence called a protospacer gets incorporated uh, into the um, CRISPR array uh, in the bacteria. And CRISPR array is for storing the past invasion invaders as a DNA sequence uh, for the protospacer. And when the same type of um, uh, virus invades again, and uh, um, DNA gets recognized by this uh, um, protospacer and then the complex will cleave it and thereby destroy the virus. And in 2012, several groups um, and independently um, discovered that this system can be engineered to um, cleave any type of uh, DNA, not just uh, um, bacterial DNA. So in an engineered form, the um, most widely used and aware well um, uh, characterized the CRISPR system is from the bacteria called the S. pyogenes. And in this system, there are two components. One is the Cas9, uh, it's abbreviated as a CRISPR associated um, uh, proteins or as, um, uh, associated, oh, sorry, this is, sorry about that. Uh, uh, Cas, uh, CRISPR associated nucleus and it's, um, um, depicted here as a purple blob, and uh, it's a nucleus, so it has the cleavage and activity. And in addition, it combines the two uh, um, motif called a PAM sequence, and uh, in this uh, as pyogenes called NGG. In different systems, it will be different PAM sequence or length and even orientation. And here is uh, just for as pyogenes, and then the second portion is our uh, components of this system is the guide RNA. And the guide RNA has two sections. One is the constant region of uh, um, uh, guide RNA, which is from the bacteria. And that depicts us the peach here color. And this one uh, forms a stem loop structure that serves as a, a, staff, a scaffolding. And the green part of the guide RNA uh, is the one we are talking about the design. Uh, design this part, okay, this is a target specific region that can be engineered to base pair with uh, the target sequence. And the target sequence also has two parts. The one that can be a base pairing with not targeted, um, the constant, uh, not constant, variable region of the guard RNA, and the other part is the NGG or PAM sequence that's uh, recognized by Cas9 nucleus instead of uh, the guard RNA. Uh, only when both sides of the target sites and bond and the uh, Cas9 will make a cut and it's a double strand break. And once the double strand break is made and the um, cellular repair mechanism will kick in uh, to make a uh, gene disruption or targeted uh, modification uh, using um, either non homologous engine joining on HEJ or HDR uh, uh, represent the uh, homologous dependent repair pathway if you supply um, 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 a template. And in general, when you design guide for this system, you would think it's quite easy because all you need to do is scan the sequence for the PAM sequence, NGG. 
However, when you introduce nucleus into the system, another consideration is to avoid cleavage and elsewhere in the genome. Uh, we refer that as off targets. So the design goal would be and maximize the on target cleavage, called a high efficacy or efficiency, but minimize off target cleavage, called high specificity. Um, so CRISPR seq is designed to um, uh, help you to find um, the ideal guides. So what rules are governing the uh, on target uh, efficacy? Uh, Dr. Rose Lab um, uh, basically uh, assayed about uh, 1800 guidelines turning across all possible target sites uh, of a panel of nine genes. And they construct a particular model of efficacy within 72 features, including GC content, um, mono or dinucleotide frequency, and um, uh, uh, dinucleotide uh, um, uh, variants, and uh, to predict the guide on efficacy. So here, uh, this figure depicts that uh, the uh, single nuclear variants, how it affects uh, the um, efficacy. Uh, specifically, for example, in the position 20, and the G is uh, highly favored and on the top, and the C is uh, highly disfavored. And so this is a one rule. So however, when you define, as I said, um, efficacy is a one side of the story, and you have to think about off target uh, effects. Um, and Zhang's lab um, studied uh, uh, the off target uh, effects by testing about 700 guideline variants with uh, 15 target sites. And um, basically, what they did is they um, mutated the, the guideline A with uh, one mismatch uh, in all different positions uh, along the guideline A, and then study how it affects its cleavage rate. And um, it, it showed that uh, not only mismatch number, but also mismatch position affect the off target cleavage. And in addition, they discovered that uh, around the preferred PAM sequences, NGG and NAG has a reduced um, uh, cleavage also. So when you design guideline A, not only uh, you want to um, use um, the PAM, preferred PAM sequences search for on target, when you search for off target, you also want to include and um, NAG as well. Um, so then later, um, uh, Dr. Ruth's lab uh, studied, uh, um, use a bigger data set, basically. General bigger data set uh, found out that uh, not only mismatch number, uh, mismatch, uh, mismatch number or mismatch position, but also mismatch type affects off target cleavage. And um, for example, RGDT mismatch, um, would not have any effects, like and will not affect the cleavage and from different positions. And IDG uh, mismatch or affect almost in, in every position. And then the uh, rest of them um, uh, depends on the position. So it's a position dependent uh, mismatch type effects. In addition, they confirmed that, that um, and this uh, SPCAS9 um, prefers NGG um, and NAG is one has uh, reduced effects in addition, they discovered that uh, other different uh, um, variants also have some reduced effects. Okay, so they call this uh, a um, constructor model, basically called a CFD score, and also develop uh, um, the, uh, another uh, efficacy prediction root rule called uh, rule set two. Um, so this technology really evolved rapidly uh, with. Uh, the uh, newly discovered uh, you know, variants of uh, CAS system, for example, CPF1 and uh, or MCAS9 or use uh, NICT CAS9 to uh, have paired configurations to reduce um, the off-target effects, also to increase the targetable size. For example, uh, CPF1 can target like um, a TT-rich region instead of a GG-rich so that they expand the target of size. So all these different variants and, and uh, uh, configuration and poses the challenges when you design different guidelines for different systems because they are likely to have different preferences for pen sequence, um, pen lens, and the guideline lens, and also pen location and orientation, and, and also paired. So all this um, adds a challenge. And, and this actually, a few years ago, then uh, Dr. Liu's lab, and um, 
study the um, uh, actually derived developed another system. It's a variant of for CRISPR. You mod modify the system and not a need to have a double strand break, thereby reducing the um, reducing the um, unintended um, insertion deletions. And so this is called a base editing. As the name implies, this it's actually have accuracy that to change one base. So currently there are um, two types, one called a CBE, one's called an ABE. CBE is for uh, cytosine and uh, convert to uh, T, so CG to TA base conversion. And the other ABE is, uh, is uh, um, so AT to GC base correction. And so for this one it has increased uh, um, specificity and accuracy. And however, when you design guide, you need to consider a uh, window and also you want it. So there's a high efficiency between like a window, uh, uh, certain windows like four to eight. And also when you search for off target, you want to think there's no such, you know, same um, uh, nucleotide in the same window size. So this is a, poses another challenge. And then um, very recently, and um, the same group developed another uh, variant of CRISPR system called um, prime editing. And some of you may have heard about that. So this one even um, has more, um, it's more versatile and can, does not require double strand break again, or donor DNA. And it has a uh, um, more wide, uh, um, wide range of uh, corrections that can be done. And um, basically I think they claim that about 89% for human disease, they can uh, make use of this to correct it. And so in this one, I'm going to briefly tell you what the, the components. Basically, there's a Cas9, but this Cas9 is a it's a, it's a Cas9 nicase instead of a, and the Y type Cas9, which the Y Cas9 make a double strand break. This one make a nicase, and and then a the reverse transcriptase and attached to it, and there's a PAG RNA and another paired guide RNA. So PAG RNA stands for prime editing guide RNA. And the ones that Cas9 make a knee case in one strand, and then the guide on a or peg on a basically guide that Cas9 to that place and then make a cut. And then this um, reverse transcriptase will use the peg on a as a guide to introduce the target changes. So for peg on a, there's a binding region and there's added sequence and, and it's a constant region. And so, and then, and in order to and permanent installation of the um, the, uh, the changes, and there is another guide on a that can nick the unchanged place so that the um, ad, the edits will be favored towards the edit side. So this is in brief vision, and you guys can read about it here. There's not on the focus of here. The focus is you know there's the challenges here, so and and it's rapidly changing. So CRISPR is designed with this in mind. Basically, we're saying that we want to be develop a system that is flexible and versatile, type adaptive. We not only can identify guideline with high on target and a low off target coverage uh, using the experimental derived um, metrics, uh, scoring metrics, and we also want to be able to rapidly adapt to the uh, evolving system uh, from you know, different species. So we have a uh, a lot of uh, different parameters so you can change to um, um, uh, quickly uh, use this uh, CRISPR uh, uh, seek to develop your guides for different systems. Uh, for example, I mentioned uh, um, um, CPF1, I mentioned uh, uh, MCAS9, and also uh, novel configurations such as the pair of knee case and DCAS9 focal one dimers. And also there are new alternative scoring models have been developed newly and they continue, I believe, will continue increase in the number. And so, and the uh, CRISPR-Seq are able to do that. And also uh, recently we added a function called the base editing and for prime editing as well. I think right now, I don't think that anyone, any package um, does that for um, have all these functionalities. And we also have um, uh, functions for you to impose different constraints on the guidelines for you, for, for example, some synthesis um, system will require maybe, you know, the first one should not be G or something like that. You can uh, use uh, um, parameters to tune that. 
and also allow design guidelines to analyze the close related sequences. And this is motivated by the, my collaborators and the requirement of quite one experiment is to uh, target one allele, the diseased allele, but not the other. Or sometimes you want to target both uh, sequences at the same time. So this is um, uh, called the compare two sequences. So there are two main functions in CRISP-seq. Uh, one is off-target analysis, and it wraps all different uh, um, kind of search of target analysis, annotation for one or set of important sequences. So if you are not interested in comparing like a study and many sequences together, just you know, um, identify guides and then uh, off target is for uh, one set of sequence. This is uh, the only function you need to know of target analysis. And it has a lot of uh, parameters. And um, in the demo, I'll show you how to find all these parameters, how to tune it. And compare two sequences, uh, as I said, you can identify guides that um, specifically target one of the two input sequences or both. So feel free to interrupt me because it's a workshop and uh, I just want to talk quickly because uh, I don't want to be like uh, steal time from, from Jian Hong. And so the overall workflow is like this. And uh, uh, as I said, it's the off-target analysis workflow and there are a lot of parameters, but if you're working with Cas9, SP Cas9, uh, everything is set uh, default from the SP Cas9. So you can use just input your sequence as a fast star of SQ files and the input a genome uh, if you are interested in off-target as well. And, and then transcript DB or org DB uh, to annotate uh, the uh, off-target site to see whether it's in axon or you know, in chong so that uh, you can uh, evaluate yourself whether uh, it's important off-target. Um, so and um, if if you that's the default setting, right? So it's very simple. And just input your you know the simplest one, just your input fast fast uh, file and the genome sequence. And if you want a paired, and all you need to do is say set a pair, find a pair of guideline A to two, and the min, you know minimal gap and the paired orientation. And then there are different types. So you can just change this file, this you know max and the minimal gap, and the order orientation and to different pair of condition, for example, DCAS9 for or the FOC1 dimer. Um, if you um, are interested in uh, working with a different uh, um, CAS9 system, for example, CPF1, and then PEM size, you need to change it to four. The guidance size may be 23. You can change it, you know, I'm using example here, but you can change a different thing. PEM, you know, sequencing instead of NGG will be TTUA, which is the for CPF1, the PEM location, instead of the default three prime, now it's five prime, because the default is SP Cas9. And for some of the collaborators, they are working with MM Cas9, which is, has a much longer PEM, and you want to change that too. And uh, this is actually here is for PEM, um, PEM pattern, which is for off target analysis. So if you, if you want to, you, you know, um, there was one question um, in relation to that um, in the polls here. It's, um, can we send new CRISPR enzyme preferences profiles to you, for example, CASX, and add this to the package? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, actually, I have been like <laughs> adding those. And at the same time, for this one, if you only needed to change this uh, size, you know, pen, it's you don't need to ask me, you just do it. It's there. Right, so it's basically this is a, a parameter you can change yourself. But if you have some complicated um, request, for example, you're working on this X and you have different uh, um, scoring matrix, and then I can I need to add that. And depending on the scoring matrix, you have different. Um, um, if you have the same um, uh, feature as the you know similar type of feature as the previous one, you can just in add, add that uh, modifying the parameter but if this is uh, something else that you have additional feature then i need to work with you and, and uh, i'll be happy to actually what's the best way for somebody to contact you in that case and um, i think the support side just use crispr seek as the um as the um, um tag in the support side that would be good and um, i have been doing this uh, so so on the support side 
and then sometimes they, they email me. Um, and, yeah. and is there information on the vignettes as to, um, you know, setting these different parameters for the different systems? Is that uh, right yeah. Okay. So, you know, um, I think, in, let me see. Um, in, I'm actually, I have to look, I'll see. Uh, hopefully how, this one will be available, right? You guys, do you guys see this? I can point you to the side uh, for this uh, pan sequence. I think it's in the, um, in the, uh, uh, manual, in the manual, in the off-target uh, analysis manual. I can show you where it is okay. in the demo. Yeah, thank you for a great question. There's a couple of more questions related to that. Is now a good time to ask them? Um, maybe you can wait a little bit. Okay. But it should, but yeah, maybe we can, um, unless you're talking about this same, this here. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll finish quickly. Let me do that. So. Yeah, okay, we'll wait. Okay, thank you. <laughs> that's great. Um, so basically, actually, uh, actually, let's answer Adonis' question too. So if you have, you know, rules, let's say, um, by default, I use um, um, off target is from Zhangfang's lab and uh, uh, the efficacy is from the rule set, set one from root lab. And, but if you want to rule set two, then you can do this. And you want to set a CRISPR scan. Actually, somebody from the support side asked for this. So and um, I told, I implemented this one. So they can just rule set equals CRISPR scan. And that's uh, from the, uh, this publication. And then if score method, you can change it to CFFD score, which takes consideration with um, the type, mismatch type. So I think, uh, um, so this is a, um, and then for base editor, it's actually only four parameter. You need to change. You change. It's a, it's, a, it's already default. If if you change the base editor, you could choose everything on the set. But if, in the future, I can imagine the base editor maybe become narrow. This one will change. You need to just change the number. Or you know, number C maybe it's A or you know different ones you can change. And in case in the future they are more available. So that's the, that's the, just make it a, um, that's the advantage of um, by conductor packages because you can just change the number, everything will follow. And then prime editor, you have a more numbers to change. This is a default setting over there. So here you just needed to check, check tell, tell the program, you know, you, where's the target start, where, where's the correct sequence. And you just needed to set it up prime editor equals true. So, um, I'm not going to go through this since. So for all profiles, and um, there are a lot of our profiles. Basically, you have a guideline in different format. The restriction side overlap, which is for validation if you want to use this method. And if not, it's not going to, you, you don't need to have. This is for pair sites in case you want to look at paired uh, design. And then the pack RNA and paired guideline for prior um, editing if you set, um, you know, uh, pack and uh, prime editing equals true. Then for off target, this is the two most important one you want to look, especially summary and off target sites. For example, for summary of guideline A, this is the one you first look. When you get the analysis results, you first look at this one. So each, basically this file contains all the guideline A's in your input sequence, whatever input sequence you input. And then it will tell you where is the genome and where is the it, target efficacy. And also top 10 off target score, you can change the top 10 to top 100, top five, that 10 is um, editable by, by you basically updated. And then for here, this one as a decision side whether you want to use this method of validation. If not, you don't have to look at it. For here, I specifically pick this one just to illustrate. If you're interested in something like have a high advocacy, low you know, off targets, have so this institution side for validation purpose, then you pick this one. If you really, like for some study, really you, you only want to knock out something, you don't care on the off targets because you're going to swim for that phenotype. Really off target may not be the top thing and you want to pick the number one efficacy one, like a high one. So this is just some guidance for you. And uh, um, detail information. Okay, okay, before it's like look at the list, right? Top five is maybe top 10 and you want to look at details. Maybe you want to be as 100 or top 20, right? This is not exact. So you want to, if like two are very close together, you may want to look back at the detailed information of off targets in the off target side uh, file. In the off target file, you look at each off target. For this one, this is, this is actually the, uh, you know, this one is, is the, 
target site, so it's the uh, highest. And then you look at whether it's in, you know, in axon or in chong, what is a gene, you know, and is this essential? And then you look at the number of mismatch, you know, mismatch distance to, and the alignment to the guides, and it's NGG or NAG, you know, and then look at it. So to, to make sure you, you actually think that's the, you don't want one particular, like a top 10, maybe one of them is the most important gene actually you knock out, that's not good. So this is the guy, some guidance. The second um, uh, workflow is to compare two sequences, I said to every parameter, all the parameters, I think, almost all, and um, what I talked and um, available here too. So you basically find a guide on A that has specific target one or both, and you all you needed to do is input sequence one, input sequence two. You can tune the other parameters to um, make them more uh, like tailored to your needs. And uh, so here, um, I got a time, and then, um, okay, this is um, for guide seek. This is another package we developed, but it's related to CRISPR seek because the in silico prediction is still in silico prediction. Once you identify your best guide, you did an experiment. Now you want to say, well, I want to know really and you know, what happened in, 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 a, in, a, in a cell, and you want to perform a genome wide, you know, unbiased authentication of, um, of, of targets. As currently, GuideSeq is the um, GuideSeq is the uh, gold standard for um, uh, um, genome-wide uh, identification of the location and the frequencies of uh, unintended off-target um, uh, cleavages. And uh, the experiment is quite you know straightforward to do. It basically leverage the uh, non-homologous end joining uh, repair pathway to co-introduce double strand. Um, oligonucleotide into the uh, cleavage site, and then followed by subsequent like um, uh, PCR amplification and uh, sequencing. And uh, the challenge is that uh, there are uh, molecular, you know, uh, called a UMI, unique molecular index, that's for each molecule to mitigate the um, amplification, PCR amplification bias. And there are also P5, P7 indexes and to for multiplexity. So, and then as a cleavage side here, you want to identify the side. So it's an, an analysis is not straightforward. And while we analyze data for our collaborators, we came up with um, uh, guide seek packages, uh, which actually have only two functions. And um, majority of you were just working with guide seek, just called guide seek analysis. Um, it's a one function and it, it does everything. I all put all what it, except for you need. And the, and the combined off-target is for um, compare different experiments or different uh, configurations or variants, and then see you know, what's the overlap, how many are common, how many are unique. And so this is a basic tool um, um, to make it easy for you to get an uh, input ready for GuideSeq um, package. And we have a scripts, pre-processing scripts available here, and it's also in the publication. And uh, for pre-processing, you generate a BAM file, UMI file, and um, guide on it you already have with fast file and the reference genome, all you need is this. And that's all necessary for the guide uh, package. And uh, to make it even easier for you, if you, um, you have BCL file, you can just run one line of code on this GitHub uh, um, uh, package called the JS preprocessor, done by two, uh, one MD student and one graduate student. Um, uh, Tom and Henry, and um, for for uh, having this happening, and this one you basically once line of code will generate all necessary files for guide seek and um, analysis. Uh, so there's references uh, here, and there's some publications, and then uh, also pre and um, pre processing uh, GitHub and also uh, the scripts in our web server, and then the workshop is here. And you, any questions, uh, feel free to post in support um, by conduct or either use CRISPR seek or guide seek as an um, header or tag. And I would like to thank uh, uh, properly before I go to demo. So I would like to thank all the co authors here for different uh, um, packages. And uh, um, I especially want to thank Mike uh, for the CRISPR seek and uh, uh, Scott for guide seek because they and really um, share their expertise in this uh, biological, I mean, expertise in this area, having understand all these uh, different um, um, biological um, uh, areas. And then I think uh, uh, to uh, one, uh, Tom and, uh, and uh, Henry for the 
um, initiate actually very, uh, it's almost that single handed, it just did the pre process and I didn't do much about that. <laughs> and so this is, a, this, this is a great. And then I'm thankful for that. And also, I would like to really thank Mike Lawrence for the guide seek package to improve um, its efficiency and for the band file and input. And I also want to thank the bike talk by conductor core member and hobby pages and he actually and it's uh, I, 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 he helps me a lot and uh, from Chipigano to CRISPR seek and guide seek and uh, so he is actually on, on on these two papers too so he's and um, I'm, I'm really thankful for that and also the entire bike conductor core they they are so helpful with all these things and uh, I I would like to thank by C2 2020 for on, you know, organize such a um, great uh, virtual meeting and uh, it's really a great, it's a lot of work, I know, I appreciate that. Um, I, this is a demo, okay, so before I go to demo, maybe you want to answer, uh, Adeline, you want, you want to ask, ask me a question? So the questions are, can the efficacy score be changed by a condition, for example, tumor type? And if it can be, can we deal with that issue using CRISPR-Seq? Yeah, so that's a great question. So yeah, so if advocacy, so yeah, so how do you do that, right? So if you have, um, if you have a efficacy a scoring matrix like the feature, you know, you have a prediction algorithm, and I'll be happy to add it. Or you, if you have some kind of weight adjustment for me to add it, I'll be happy to add it too. Or you, you can even can modify yourself. But for now, I think um, it's the challenges. So it's, it's a great question. So like, so you know that the different actually, um, different cells even probably have different efficacy because uh, and, and it's, it's how the Cas9 the complex gets there make a cut maybe their allele you know it's not even mentioned this allele difference it's also like uh, accessibility you know can cast not get there um so this is it's, it's, a, it's a great ac ac question so this is all depend on how if you have the data if you have the data yes yeah if you have a data you have the model yes and everything like a framework is there so for example for me to add a CRISPR scan it's not much work uh, all I did is just to add some line of code to, to add it and add the prediction model to it. And um, so it, it's, uh, it, but when you have something like you don't have it and we have the model, that's a different story. Yeah, it's an excellent question. Did that answer your question, Adeline? Um, I, I don't know because um, if the person who, an who asked the question would like to... Oh, oh I see. Oh, I thought it's your question. Okay, so, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. The next question is, does CRISPR-Seq find gRNA on both strands? gRNA, yes. Actually, we will all put that I information for you too. Yes. Um, how does CRISPR-Seq, um, how, can, how CRISPR-Seq can identify gRNAs from the FASTQ file? Oh, okay. So, oh, oh yes. So you are, okay, so let, let's do this. Maybe for example, if we, let's say we have a demo here, you first the library, right? Load on the example library, and then you load on the genome, you want to search for off targets. You want to load on the transcript DB for annotated gene, to gene exon intro, and then you want the gene name, stuff like that. And then you have an out file, like where you all put, and then you have an input. The input, let's say you have an input sequence. So how to from this fast Q file, a faster file to find the CRISPR, right? So what it does, if you look at this here, so it's ox and all we can look at off targets, right? You want to find out how, the, how it did it. Oh, actually this stuck here. I must have done something, but it's okay. So I run this already just a moment ago. But anyway, here uh, is this here. So I might have the, Oh, terminal, is it? Okay, because it's a, um, it, okay, it, cancer. So you, yeah, so I can tell you what is it. So um, before that, okay. Um, it, it might be worth just pointing out to people, um, to, or I can do it, um, where they find the resources for this website. Yeah. Oh, this one, yes, okay. So this, this, this package, this is in a, do, in a, in a Docker image, you can see. And also in the, um, 
maybe I can show you this. Maybe people want to take a snapshot on this, like take a screenshot of this. You know what I mean? And so this one, so has this, uh, um, so this is in the workshop, right? So in the Docker image, CRISPR seek, guide seek by C2020 workshop. So there, you know, Vinet has this, okay, let me go if I can find it somewhere. Um, uh, can we, you can all, if you go to the Pathable website under files, it's also linked there. Yeah, if you go here, CRISPR seek guide seek, if you search, uh, it's here. So basically it's, it's here. So if you go Vnet, so basically in here, there's an IMD file here. Okay, so you guys can do yourself. Basically, you set up this you know, library. Of course, you have to install this, but this is in Docker. I mean, you already installed in Docker. And you set up, you say, what's, what output you actually want to be and what's the input file. Here, make sure this is a system file, right? And if you want to, set up your own file, you have to give a directory, not, not just like system file, for example, here. And let me, let me come here. So if you want to set up a directory, you have to say, you know, the work directory, you have to come here, set a work directory, for example, something. You know, I have a 10 PC here, actually. Okay, so something like that, not a system that file, okay? Just let you know, because sometimes they think it's a system by file. And so here is, did you guys get this file? Oh, sorry. So here, right, so input to this. And you can find out what's the argument here. What are argument for this two different, I told you there are two arc targets are compared to sequences. You know, you can find out more about this function. It's, and it's that's very it. small. Can you just make the font a little bit bigger? Oh, okay, sorry. Can I do this? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So basically you can do this and then you run. So here is a you know, different uh, final gun A, you want to find a gun A, but now you first I, I recommend people set this to nothing. Just search for gun A to make sure your code work, like script works. And then cha you change it to the target DNA and like a chromosome. For example, this one I know this, this input file contains guides in chromosome X. So I'm just going to put the X. Later, I can change it to, to all because right now, just make sure it runs before you, you search for the whole genome. You just take time and find out there's an error in the middle. That's how, um, you know, just some tricks. And then if you want to change, let's say, find a gun there, you're paired, then you change it to paired, okay? So this is how um, change the system. Um, this match mismatch is equal to zero, so so that they're not going to be finding off targets. Uh, not they're off target, but it's only perfectly matched off target. Usually, when your real situation, you want to set the max mismatch to more, like for example, you know, two or three or four. So the, uh, another uh, advantage of CRISPR seq it doesn't have a limit, right? It's just slower if you have more. But if you have a, a long sequence, or if you want a genome wide, you know, guideline finding. Then I, I suggest you run it in the, in, in the um, cluster uh, to do that. So for example, here you can, you know, if you are using restricted enzyme cut to validate your results, then you can say find a gallon A with RE only equals true. And they find, uh, uh, okay, here is also for find a gallon A for different one six. And you want to find this position where the cuts, you want an overlap. So this is a specific, so you always can find this example, how you find this, you know, this one, you, all you need to do is to come here, to I show here, you see, just off target, what's, basically it's a help. And then you come here, you look, there's different, you can, you can see that there are different uh, um, parameters you can set, and uh, uh, many things you can, if you want it faster, you can annotate pair equals a false. You don't want any annotate, uh, uh, annotation about paired because I'm not interested in paired, then you can set a paired equals four, find a gun on a paired equals false, and this one you can set to false. So uh, you can use a default if you just run, you know, your first analysis just to see. If I told you about the base editor, if you want to turn it on, you can just choose because everything else already set up for you for, for prime editor, all you needed to do, change it to true, uh, everything else set up for you, but then you want to say where's your target button and right because that I cannot tell it's all um, 
then it will, the pair gang for powder and for prime editing will be in this file output. Uh, so a lot of um, parameters you can tune, like weight, weight matrix and feature weight matrix. The default is this rule set one. You can change it to rule set two, and um, you can use you know. So that's a lot of. Uh, this one is actually for the guideline A is no longer um, valid because uh, uh, the package I depend on is um, it's not good, working. So we uh, um, it's nobody mentioned the other package. So for this folding part, but here it's okay. So then score method you can pick one of the other. So there are activity that you can tune if you have uh, evidence or you have some published more you know recently published results you can change this. Um, Pen position, for example, pen location is a three prime by default because SPCAS9 is a three prime, but there are five prime for the other one. For rule set, I have three implemented, but if you have more, you can tell me. Rule set one, rule set two, increase the scan. And then the activity file is from this uh, DO root 2016. And so all this um, uh, here, Oh, you ask me how you find it. Basically, scans. I think somebody asked uh, the question, how do you find the guideline A? Uh, is it basically scan the input sequence from the PAM sequence? Uh, or any restriction you put there. For example, you want these um, guys to have paired, you search for paired configuration. This is the PAM. Um, PAM pattern is for off-target um, de definition. You will ask, you, if you ask for uh, the pen and also whether it's um, overlap with uh, uh, restriction enzyme um, and other anything here like a paired uh, like a pen orientation and also a lens guideline lens um, so your input sequence it serves as a it's, it's a base for for running this program then you'll find the guide. But the guy, that's not a whole, not a whole story. If you have to um, uh, search for off target as well, which is all these different parameters do. I mean, you you want to tell it what's the, what what you consider as a pattern uh, off target. But by default, you you only need to change a few parameters. That's the, that's the beauty of it. And here I already run, so it will show all this information. For example, this guy on applied pen, and then this is shine side. So you can um. Let me see here, anything else here? I'm just, uh, um, okay, let me see. If uh, there are some other, let me go back to here. For example, you wanted to use CFT score. All you needed to do is a score method of CFT. Yeah. And if you want to, uh, you know, you want a PAM on the five prime side, then you change the PAM location to five prime, you want to change the pen to your pen. This is just hypothetical. I'm just testing, but not necessarily they have they are such a pen. Okay, just so you know, don't just copy this. You need to find out that one from your you know your experiment. For example, you want to raw set with CRISPR scan. You can use that. And uh, so there are different way for prime editing. You can change, and um, you know, for prime editing, you do this. Uh, tell it is for prime editing. Let me see what is the prime is it prime editing. Pam in, you know, change the uh, input test and uh, prime editing because it's true probably somewhere. Um so I think this is for for this the exercise there too. You can you can figure out. I think you can just this is straightforward, you can just run the important things you understand. You need to change, you need to you need to look at in the documentation carefully and not just just copy. Um, so, and then for guidance seek it's even simpler. All you need to just tell the UMI input file, the unique molecular index file, and an alignment input file, a band file, and your guide on A, uh, you know, because you're looking for off target. So all you do is one line of code, guide seek analysis. Everything is set up for you for default, you can change it. And they said uh, you can use a number of call to make it faster. And so this is um, uh, for that. Any question uh, I didn't answer? Just um, make sure. So there was one question. I'm not too sure it's been answered. Um, it, is it possible to use the off-target function for CRISPR-seq guide RNAs 
where no cleavage is performed, basically to only identify likely off-target binding sites. Uh, use a, use a, no, uh, you mean use GalaSeq or use CRISPR-Seq? Use CRISPR-Seq, yes. Use off-target analysis, yes. This is exactly as uh, for, in, um, for in silico. So basically you haven't performed the analysis yet. You want to find the guide that has um, the least um, of number of off targets or scoring. And from that Excel file I took and um, showed you. Um, so yes, that's a good question. So if you for off target analysis, you want to look at that. So this is a, um, you can look, right? So for each guideline in your input file, and you look at a target, you basically predict that for you. That's an off target analysis. And this is also basically the predictor of target sites from this off target uh, uh, function. Let me see. From this off target function, right? So this is exactly what we are doing. For the other one, guide seek, you need to do experiment, right? This is really experimental. For this, uh, CRISPR seek is for design guide A. Uh, so before you do any experiment, you don't have experiment data yet. Is that a question? Um, yeah, uh, well, I, I had one question unrelated to that. So you could uh, use that then to identify potentially guide RNAs that were badly designed and maybe hitting enhancers rather than genes? Um, oh, I see. So if you, if you use a badly designed guide RNA, what's gonna happen, you mean? Um, Can you repeat that? Sorry. Or if, for example, um, if you did off-target I, I, um, analysis, could you identify, we'll say, um, targets that were likely to be hitting enhancers rather than genes? It could be potential and enhancers mm. of the gene. So if you, yes, if you, if you have the enhancer information, yes. And you can use a chip Ugano, actually, it's also on my package. You can use a chip Ugano, just annotate this thing. Yeah, and actually one of the questions that was related to that was, does the CRISPR-seq result have the information on the location of the guide RNA related to its target gene? Yes, and so I can, I can show you the way it is, I, uh, so right here. So this is a target, to view when you see it, so this is a target. Target location, you can view this, copy this in there and see. So of course here you can see two, and this one's too small. Oh, I make it bigger. So yes, this is a, the, the four target, for example, gene get one. That's actually a good test. If 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 you 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 the guideline you find, and and it's supposed in the you know in the gene you input it's not there, then that's not that may sound something is wrong, right? It's actually a good test. Yes, good question. Anything else? Thank you all for the great question. And if not, I'll give to Jian Hong for a few minutes actually, just briefly introduce uh, the other two packages for motif analysis, which is a um, motif stack which is published in um, Nature Methods uh, and also the DAG logo we are uh, submitting. So it's all both of a motif analysis ones for um, uh, mo uh, motif alignment uh, and the visualization and the other one comparison and the uh, data logo is for proteomics data. So uh, Jian Hong, I'm going to turn to you. Hello, I'm Jian Hong. I'm very glad uh, to have the chance to talk about the motif stack, a tool to visualize sequence motif alignments. Uh, you can install the workshop package from the GitHub. Uh, by following uh, these codes, you can install the uh, back to uh, back 2020 workshop in my GitHub by back manager. It will take some time to generate the weakness. Uh, what is motive and what is a sequence logo? A sequence motive is a short recurring pattern with a biological significance. Uh, TF binding motives are often visualized as a sequence logo. And as we can see here, uh, there are, uh, this is shown alignment of uh, uh, amino acid sequence for Gisophila IRs of a part of a uh, uh, pore loop and uh, M2 transmembrane segment. Uh, the 
alignment show all the animal acid information for each protein. Uh, it uses colors to highlight the uh, conserved part. However, it will take time to get the recurring pattern of the overall structure of the protein. Is there any way to summarize the recurring pattern with a biological significance uh, in quantity manner so we can use it for calculation? Uh, motives are introduced for this purpose. Motives are often represented as a position count matrix, a position frequency matrix, or position weight matrix. For example, position count matrix, we count the, the number for each amino acid occurrence in each aligned position. For uh, position one, there are seven alumin, uh, 12 uh, isoleucine, and 15 leucine, and so on. Uh, for frequency, the frequency in PFM is calculated by the number for each amino acid divided by the total number of counts in each position. So the sum for each column should be one. The position weight matrix is calculated based on the information theory. Basically, it is calculated by the observed frequency divided by the background uh, uh, frequency and then do log two transform. Mm -hmm. Sequence logo based on information theory or probability theory has been used as a graphic representation of the sequence motifs to show the frequency mm -hmm. of bases or amino acid at each conserved position. Uh, high throughput experiment uh, approach uh, has been developed to identify binding sequence for large number of TFs uh, in several organisms. Uh, the experimental method include DNA's footprint, chip seek, uh, uh, pro protein binding microarray, PBM, uh, B1H, Silex, and uh, uh, smell seek. The mo and the motive are downloadable via different databases. Uh, for example, we can download the PBM data from Uniprobe database, uh, B1H from FFS uh, database. Uh, we have a lot of packages. And the motive stack, a uh, motive DB is a bioconnect package, uh, mm. uh, which is a collection of DNA binding motifs in bioconductor. Uh, here is a, a web logo and the SIG logo. Web logo three is an online tool to represent the sequence motif. And we have TomTom -tom and uh, uh, STEM to compare multiple motifs. Uh, they are how they lack in flexibility in displaying similarity or differences among motifs. Uh, so motif style is a backlog package can visualize multiple motifs and generates the motif stack or motif code or uh, summarize the mo uh, similar motifs uh, in a, a signature. And uh, more and more styles will be introduced into motive stack pattern in continuous development. Uh, and to plot the motive logo, it's very simple. Just load library motive stack and import matrix and plot. So the, basically the information is a calculated, uh, information content is calculated by this formula. And the plot RNA motif, just the change the raw name from T to U is okay. Uh, plot uh, animal acid, it's, it's just uh, contain 20 rows uh, to contain all the counts for the animal acid. You can also plot uh, customized logo if you define the raw names outside DNA, RNA, and animal acid. Uh, more and more, uh, uh, you can also plot multiple uh, sequence logo very easy. You can sign the different color for the phylogenetic tree and also set the color bar by the uh, R annotation or the color annotation. We also implement uh, cluster, pro, uh, cluster motifs. Uh, uh, with, uh, this is the algorithm of a meta line because we are losing motive package which implement a STEM algorithm in uh, release version, but in uh, development version, we are losing STEM. We can also browse motive uh, in a web page. Uh, this is the DAG logo, can uh, simplify the sequence uh, logo by the group of uh, logos and use different color to show the difference uh, between the uh, different chemical or physical uh, property of the amino acid. Uh, motive stack can visualize RNA, DNA, and amino acid motive, and can visualize bunch of sequence logo, and can highlight group motifs by their signatures. I would like to thank uh, uh, Julia Zhu 
and uh, Ken Paul's uh, and the thanks uh, for all the members uh, and my colleagues uh, in both lab and uh, I would like to thank the Belk uh, 2020 committee for the great conference and the regeneration next. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's um, a very useful tool. I posted the link um, to that vignette in the chat window. Um, I think we're just at about time. I just wanted to thank you um, for your workshop in BioSeed 2020.